Hello my fellow comic book collectors, it's Alan the Comic Collector Geek and uh, this is part one of this new unboxing <laughs> um, and um, it's going to be 12 parts. I, I've kind of worked it out what what the parts will be and um, this first part actually is interesting because what happened was um, I reported on a very cool comic uh, which was the very first appearance um, first appearance and kind of a key like historical book um howdy doody was you know a very popular show uh in the i guess late 50s early 60s and um they made a comic about it so that you know there was a comic and that was the first appearance of howdy doody in comics okay and they but when they made that comic, unknowingly, they didn't realize what they were doing. They actually made the very first comic book uh, devoted to a TV series. <laughs> so it was the first time that a comic had been actually about uh, a TV series. So not only is it the first appearance of How Do You Do It, but it also has a significance of being the first TV series or TV series adapted comic, um, which makes it kind of extra cool. Um, so I was doing a report on one of my Silver Age um, hot ten lists, or and uh, I was talking about this book, and I was trying to get it. Actually, I was bidding on a copy, and I lost. I lost at the last second, um, and I was really, really disappointed. But then one of my subscribers mentioned, "Hey, there is this lot, and it was in that lot. Um, it was just a bunch of comics, and this." howdy doody one which actually can go for quite a bit of money by itself uh was mixed into this big lot of golden and silver age comics and um so i bid on it and um i won <laughs> and this is the lot right here and we're going to go through it and i'm going to see what's inside and realize when i was bidding on it i didn't pay much i paid i think it was like about a dollar a piece and i think there's 36 comics in it um the Howdy Doody by itself goes for over a hundred. Um, but yeah, I was bidding on it really for the Howdy Doody, <laughs> but I got all these other bonus comics as a result. So they they didn't really do much bagging and boarding. So you can see it's like, they're just loose comics, but we'll get into it anyways, we'll show it. And um, we'll see what what's inside. But uh, it looked like there's some other cool things. So the first one, actually this one's not as bad looking as it did on the picture, it looks quite good, uh, is Little Lulu Trick or Treat. So this is gold key, nice 12 center, Silver Age comic. And yeah, oh, it even comes with <laughs> something inside. What does this say? Um, so uh, Margie's Little Lulu, um, 12th month, 1965. Uh, this subtitle of this issue is Trick or Treat. Might fool some uh, readers who are thinking it's a special edition. Not so. And don't ask me why the publishers all none wow, the handwriting's a little hard to read. Um, <laughs> allowed, oh sorry, all the publishers allowed the controversy of a Halloween cover with a December uh, publishing date, unless the comic hit stands in uh, two months early. So yeah, it is a Halloween issue, and it's uh, which is weird for the Silver Age. They were kind of weird about um, Halloween covers in the Silver Age, though there are a bunch, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, so this one's interesting. I actually has a little bit of Lulu nudity. <laughs> It's like, oh, this is topless. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, so yeah, so a uh, very interesting issue. This is from 1965, as I was saying. Just a very, very odd uh, book. And it actually has some ads for other gold key things, like uh, the Jetsons and Don uh, Uncle Scrooge and Bugs Bunny. So that's kind of cool. So that's the first book in here. This next one is a really interesting one as well. And this is Rhubarb. 
and I guess it's the cat. Let's see, does this have also have a thing in the middle? That was really weird. I don't know why they put the little extra description, description thing in it. This one's like about a cat. And um, it says, owner of the book Brooklyn Ball Club. I believe that if this is the one I think it is, it's a Dell Four Color uh, 423. And Rhubarb is about a cat that I believe gets an inheritance of, uh, a, you know, a big, uh, you know, like fortune. And uh, this is from 19... One sec, I gotta find it. 1952. Oh, so it's a Golden Age book. Um, and, um, yeah. Yeah, basically that's the story. It's a, <laughs> it's this cat that it gets the inheritance of, uh, you know, uh, like the owner of the book, Brooklyn Baseball Club. So, you know, very odd story. I remember... Uh, I think there was a cart uh, animation or movie made about it. Not animation, but uh, live action, actually. Um, then we got Marge's little Lulu. And she's, like, dancing with this kid. <laughs> she's writing help on the back of it, which is kind of cute. And this is another. This one looks like more like... Uh, go this is Golden Age. Uh, and this one is from... As I said, these are all a mixture of Golden Age and Silver Age. This one's from 1954, Little Lulu. And then we have, like, it's, it's, as I said, it's a pretty good collection. So we got, now we got a comic called Treasure Chest. This is another uh, Silver Age book from 1957. I'm not familiar with this one at all. The other ones I had some clue, but this one I have no clue. No clue about this one. But it is, uh, you know, Seems interesting on the inside. For a dollar a piece, hey, <laughs> I'm totally down for that. You know, you can actually, this one's kind of interesting because it is early, um, early Silver Age. It has the big stamp. I always think that's funny. Actually, it's weird, weird to see the nun on the back here. <laughs> it's very odd. Okay. And then we got some more Little Lou. This one looks like Golden Age because it's a 10 center and uh, no stamp another golden age book this would be probably from i'm gonna guess like 52 ish era uh, one sec here let's see if i guess right uh 1953 that's close pretty good guess so yeah so uh another little loop so I have a pretty good little Lulu collection after this. And there were some Archies in here. So this one I thought was interesting. We got a really thick Archie. This is Archie's Gals and Pals, issue number five. Um, now this is a big 25 center. You can see how big and th this is a thick, thick issue. And uh, yeah, this one's quite nice. Um, this one is a, uh, like obviously um, a Silver Age book. But yeah, not too bad. That one's pretty cool. Okay, that's the first bag. Okay. Then we got some Casper. Golden Age Casper. Casper the Ghost. Not sure when... This one's got a bit of a rip cover. A little lower grade. And this is from 1955. So... Kind of early Silver Age. Yeah, I think that's cool. Like the snowman stuff. Then we got another little Lulu. She's walking her dog. <laughs> kind of funny way. Actually, the ads in the back are kind of interesting. So yeah, so we got uh, little Lulu. I'm just checking the years on these since I, I have them all open. This is uh, from 1954, so this would be this Golden Age. Okay, this one's a little later. This is 1961. Little Lulu. Now, Dell didn't put the codes on the their books, even though it's uh, Silver Age. 
And then we have another, I think this is Golden Age, little Lulu. It's the pen cent per cover price. That's the only thing I'm going by. <laughs> uh, but you can check the year. And the year is, uh... actually this is uh, Lulu volume one, number 91. 1956. So actually, this is gold, uh, Silver Age, barely sort of the beginning of the Silver Age. And then we have um, Mandrake the Magician, number two, from King uh, Comics. So this one's in really high grade, like really, like actually really in good shape. Um, so yeah, it's a King Mandrake the Magician, number one, uh, number two, actually. I like this one. This one's really nice. Uh, this is um, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. A nice shark cover. I really like shark covers. So this is really cool. I'm not sure if this is a first print. So this is one of those things where these classic illustrators are kind of interesting that way because sometimes they're, um, they are they reprinted them quite often. And what you usually have to do is you look at the indicia and sometimes it'll say uh, there. But if it doesn't, um, what issue number is this? 47. It is a first printing because it will show the next issue. You see the ad right there? And sometimes if you look at the back, I think I just lost a piece of it. <laughs> um, you'll see what the, all the issues are that they have for sale. And if the last issue is the issue that you're in, then you know that um, generally it is a first printing. If it has issues past it, obviously, well, it's not a first print anymore. So this is a first printing of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This book alone is actually a pretty big key. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And to get that as a first printing. Now, this looks like a, uh, a second print, or not even a second print, maybe a multi-print, and I'll show you the difference. So this one is another one of these classics illustrated, but this is uh, issue number 13, and it's 15 cents. And you saw that the other one was 10 cents. Now, the original version of this would probably be, um, uh, you know, um, like a 10 center as well. And it doesn't say inside, and that's one of the frustrating things about it. But you can see on the back, it shows all the issue numbers. And this one was issue number 13, yet it goes well past 13. <laughs> So you can tell that it's it's a it's a later printing. I'm not sure which printing it is. Um, typically, I, I've actually seen the cover for this one before the the first printing, and it's similar to the way the the other book was with this kind of more muted color, like this style. Um, and this one looks like a new cover for this book. So this is uh, classes classics illustrated Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. So probably a Silver Age copy of that one. Okay, we got another stack. There's like four stack or five. Wow, so many stacks. So it's a lot of books. So we're gonna go through this. Okay, and this is another Classics Illustrated, a bunch of Classics Illustrated. And this one also looks like a later printing. I can't quite tell, but. So this is um, the Pathfinder. And it doesn't say on the back there. Yeah, so this is issue 22. Yeah, this is a later printing. And you can see all the issue numbers. So this is a later printing. It looked like a later printing, I could tell. So Classics Illustrated number 22. Oh, uh, probably a later printing. And then we have an interesting one. <laughs> this is Animal Comics. And... Uh, from Dell. And we've got Pogo in the back. And let's see what it is. This one's from 1947. So Animal Comics from 1947. And it's Pogo on the bottom as well. Okay. And another thing that I was kind of interested in. Oh, and it's one of them. Awesome. Okay, I'm so excited about this one. Um, what issue number is this? Then we have a Lone Ranger, number eight. And these ones are especially cool. So whenever he's wearing the red 
uh, top, there's a really cool thing that's on the back of these books. So this is Lone Ranger number eight. And on the back, they always have these things where they profile uh, Native leaders, Native American leaders. So this is really cool. And who is this one? This is Chief Chief Broken Arm. <laughs> what a great name. Chief Broken Arm. I, I, I really, I've been trying to get one of these in my collection for the longest time. Getting these early issues of Lone Ranger is actually quite difficult. So I'm super excited to have this one in my collection. So... And it's all all because I was trying to find <laughs> a different book. Uh, then we got um, Archie number fifty eight. It's kind of a cool one. And this is a, maybe a no, it's a ten center from it, but it is Silver Age nineteen fifty nine. Not sure who the artist is, but uh, definitely a very cool uh, Archie cover. So, yeah. And in reasonably good shape. Reasonable. I would say it's like a 3-0. And then we have another interesting one. This is Lassie. And this is from, uh, this is, I believe this is Lassie number two. This is uh, uh, the uh, TV or movie adapt adaptation of Lassie number two. It's got a nice cover on the back as well. Very cool. Lassie, number two. And then we got Felix. Felix the cat. And this is a Dell four color something or other. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's also, that's the problem with Dell four colors. They, um, this is actually Felix the cat, volume one, number 16 from 1950. So that's really cool. I like this one. The little mouse is stealing his drink, <laughs> which is fun. Okay. So many comics. It was a pretty good deal. <laughs> I think I paid a hundred and something altogether for the whole thing. And these, it's a pretty good deal. This is a later printing of uh, Gulliver's Travels. But still, a very. I always liked the story of Gulliver's Travels. I liked when he's like a giant at one point and he's a little guy in other points. I always liked Gulliver's Travels. I thought it was a really good thing. It was actually um, the story of Gulliver's Travels, actually based on more of a society thing. It was more of a commentary on society. A very, very interesting uh, story behind it. Um, but this is um, number 16. And again, it's a later printing because you can see on the back, it goes well beyond number 16 in terms of the issue numbers. So that means that it's a later printing. But uh, yeah, Classic Illustrated number 16. Oh, this one's cool. Wow, and it is super thick. Look how thick that is. <laughs> it's like a big, thick book. This is uh, The Raven and Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven, with... Uh, um, Vincent Price on the cover. I was blanking on his name for a second there. Um, and the strange and exciting story of unbelievable magic. The Raven. And let's see. Oh. Oh, okay. It's not as thick as I thought. I was like, why is it so thick? It was the, the books were sticking to each other. <laughs> I was like, why is it so thick? Okay, so this is the Raven. And the, there's a book behind that was like sticking to it for a little bit. So this is the Raven with Vincent Price. Movie classic. That's really cool. And then we got in behind it was this one. Betty and Veronica Annual. Number four. Uh, so this is really cool. I like um, Betty and Veronica. This is a really good one. I I just... I, I'll just call up Archie and remind him of our date for our date tonight. I'm sure Archie hasn't forgotten our date tonight. I'll just give him a, a, but just in case, I'll give him a ring. So they're both calling Archie to say that he has a date with them tonight. So that's kind of fun. Archie always seems to get the girls. I don't know why. <laughs> He's such a goofy kid. <laughs> like, would you go after this guy with his buck teeth? And <laughs> why does he get all the girls? Um, so yeah, so just a really great uh, Archie book. Betty and Veronica, fourth annual. 
Then we have another little loop. 12 center, so Silver Age book. And gold key. And... Oh, we're almost to the big book. Okay, so then, actually, these ones are all baked and boarded. Wow, that's kind of nice. Okay, so then we got more little Lulu. Not sure what issue number this is. From 1952. And she put the... She's trying to mimic the natives. She put the, the carriage on her back, which is kind of funny. And then we have... Jingle Jangle Comics, number 20. Nice. Actually, a reasonably high-grade copy of it, too. Uh, except there's a bit of a corner bend here. A corner uh, uh, rip. Dave Endler. Dave Endler cover. And then we got another little blue. It's kind of cute. And this is the one that was the reason I bought the lot. This is Howdy Doody number one. And as I said, this is the first appearance of Howdy Doody in comics. And also um, the first time we get a, a TV adapted into a comic. A TV show adapted into a comic. So double key for this book. Very, very important book in terms of comic history. And then we got Tommy Hawk, Tomahawk number 22 from 1954. DC Time Center. And then we have Little Lulu. Uh, I'm not sure which issue is what, what issue it is, but uh, Little Lulu. Uh, I gotta flatten these out a bit, they're a little bit curved. Another Little Lulu. They're playing back <laughs> uh, checkers on this boy's back. It's just funny. And then one more Jingle Jangle. These are kind of cool. Not sure what issue number this is. Oh, number three. Issue number three. So Jingle Jangle Comics number three. I'm wondering who did the art on this. It has a, I'm almost kind of curious about it. Very interesting art style. So Jingle Jangle Comics number three. So yeah. So those are this massive lot of golden and silver age books that I picked up uh, and for really cheap. I was so lucky. I just nobody like there was a few other bidders and they had bid it up to a certain amount. And then I just got it <laughs> like they didn't bid me up after I put my bid above it. So um, got it for a steal. So it was pretty great. I think maybe somebody snoozed or, or something on it because uh, it's just such a great lot. Um, so I really appreciate when people find uh, cool things like that and notify me about it. So definitely that was a, a big win for me. So I hope you enjoyed this first part of this unboxing. And there's some really great stuff that I'm going to be showing in this series of 12 videos. And um, I hope you enjoy this. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the parts of this video. And thanks again for watching. Bye for now.